Hello, everybody. I'm Tony Felker. For those who do, I do not know, President and CEO of the Frisco Chamber of Commerce. And contrary to what it may look like, I'm not actually at Norma's today. I do miss Norma's, but it's my way of kind of reminding everybody, stay at home, but still support your restaurants, your local businesses with curbside, drive through wherever possible. So that's just my reminder that I am keeping an eye on Norma's. As always, as we do these conversations with the Chamber, I am joined by Mr. Chris Lee, our Governmental Affairs Manager. And today we have a special guest star with us here, Mr. Sean Duncan with SMD Consulting. Welcome, John. Good morning, guys. So for those who might be brand new to these conversations with the Chamber, this is a takeoff of what we used to do conversations at the Chamber where we would have a usually government-related entity come in and speak and how they relate to the business community. In this new normal that we have here, we're trying to take the conversations at the chamber out to the public via Zoom conference calls or anything else that we can and talk about issues and topics that are important to our business community and that hopefully all of our businesses out there can be using as they're making decisions on key things like what to do with payroll, what to do with real estate, how to manage cash flow, how to process and apply for some of these loans and grants that are out there uh, that are now being finalized now that we got the CARES Act or the stimulus bill passed last week. So there's a lot of things out there. Everybody is being flooded with information. We're just trying to provide a little bit new and different information here where we can share it with people who are in our business community and just trying to get as much information out there as possible. Before we get to our guest today, Chris, do you want to give us any quick updates in terms of what may have happened out there recently or anything that you want to kind of emphasize and highlight for our listeners? Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. So um, today, as we record this, it's Tuesday, March 31st. Um, if you haven't paid attention over the weekend, um, Governor Abbott actually expanded his executive orders to air travel and road travel. So if you're coming in from Louisiana by road, um, it has to be for essential uh, business only, as well as, and I can't remember all the states, but they're all listed on our, our website, our coronavirus resource page on our website, if you wanna go there to see what the new executive order covers. As, uh, other than that, we're digging our teeth into this um, CARES Act, the phase three or the stimulus package. There's a bunch of different names that it all goes by, but it's all the same thing. So we're digging our teeth into that. So. I'm um, excited to, to chat with Sean today and uh, hear from him and see what we can bring to our businesses. And obviously, as we're dealing with this stuff, as we said, things are changing a lot and we're adjusting to the new normal. I think most people were possible are working from home. We definitely want to thank all of our first responders, our healthcare workers, uh, everything that they're going through. I think we're probably looking at another three to four weeks at a minimum at this point in time that this will become the new normal. But we also know that businesses are trying to make decisions. They're trying to decide how to keep up with their business if they're open right now, or if they're effectively closed down, what does that look like for the future? So Sean, uh, if you don't mind, just give us a quick overview of what your business is and what business was for you under normal circumstances. And then we'll dig into the topic at hand a little bit. So, well, my name is Sean Duncan. I own SMD Consulting and Accounting here in Frisco, and our specialty is the business, small business advice. Uh, we're a CPA firm, so we do a lot of tax strategy, but there also is more to it than just tax. We'll end up talking about cash flow and life work balance and operations and efficiencies and should you sell the business, should you buy one, all the stuff that when you're a business owner, you call your CPA up and you want to ask questions, never ask it on April 14th because they're losing their mind. We all year round proactively focus on stuff. And that's where a lot of this conversation about cash flow comes up. It's a conversation we're having every single day with clients about, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I've lost 50% of my revenue. What do I do? Um, but it's, also, it's not just the business. It's then what does it mean for their household? We're helping the individual with their planning. And so whether that was actually stuff we were doing before to, or now, now it's a lot about cash flow, sustaining, how I'm going to get through the next two, three months. Prior to that, we were doing a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of acquisitions, business acquisitions, supporting people on the tax structure and the entities and working with the lawyers. Um, but it's all that stuff, tagline a client created for us, so I just keep stealing it is, we do what you wish your CPA would do. We focus on advice. And, oh, by the way, we happen to be really good with tax stuff, too. Very good. So I actually came across this example, I guess, that somebody used in a webinar the other day. 
and they equated it to a house and the four walls of a house. And the number one thing you need to take care of at home is make certain you have food in the, in the home. Number two, make certain you have lights and water. Number three, take care of rent or mortgage. And number four, make certain your car is working. Pretty much in that order, it's sort of a hierarchy. Using that sort yeah. of an example, what would you say are those four walls from a business perspective at this point in time? Uh, wow. Um, in no particular order, obviously, you just you first focus on your family. I know that sounds silly from the business standpoint, but you got to make sure your family is good and everybody's communicating and everybody's safe and happy because it kind of doesn't matter what the business is. I understand your business provides for your family in a lot of cases, but actually I flip it the other way. What do you need to take care of your household first? And if that requires your time, that will then impact and adjust what you're going to do inside the business. So if you need to be there for e-learning two hours a day, then you need to be there for e-learning two hours a day so you make sure your kids are squared away. Then you figure out the business part. I know that sounds backwards, but that's really the way I start with the four walls. The other three things, and this is the way we've had a lot of conversations, it breaks down into really three categories. The operational changes you're going to make, how you're running your business, decisions you're doing with finances and vendors and whatnot, the governmental decisions. I mean, obviously there's CARES Act and there's a lot of stuff to filter through and we're all losing our minds. All my lawyer, banker, financial advisor friends, we're elbow deep into this stuff trying to make sure that we give the best possible advice. But how do you manage the governmental options? And then you move to actually full-blown strategic. What are you going to do? Where are the opportunities? How, what are my other ways of doing this? A lot of folks will clamp down and just stop spending money and stop hiring experts and stop strategizing. And that like you said, Tony, if this goes on for a month, a month, that's the storm you have to weather. And when you get out of it after the month, what are you going to be doing? If all you do is focus on this moment, you might lose the opportunities or not be prepared for the ramp back up as it gets going again. So we look at it in three ways, operational, governmental, and strategic. That's, that's the way we've done it, but it all starts with your family. What are you doing with your family first? That's a great way of looking at it. And Chris, you want to chime in because We'll just share personal because that's the part of what it is. You're newlywed still, what, three months? And now you got a brand new puppy. So you know all about taking care of family <laughs> first. So, Oh, yeah. No, I. Uh, it's great. We've Tony, you've been great leading us and trying to encourage us to take breaks every once in a while throughout the day. Well, lucky for me, I get to take a break about every 30 minutes to potty train a puppy. So it's been it's been quite the experience working from home. And um, it, it, I, I don't think I had it. I don't think I've heard it put that way with the, the four walls. And I appreciate, Sean, how you've framed it. I think a lot of businesses don't necessarily think about it that way, where you start with your family. What do what you need to do to take care of yourself first? And then from there, um, what, what is next? So I think that's a, that's a really important way to put that, especially with everybody working from home and everything changing so rapidly, especially with, uh, I don't have little ones yet, but I'm sure many of you, um, our viewers might have get kids at home and uh, that might be changing how they look at things. Well, one thing I do want to ask real quickly, um, what are some of the, the big things from the CARES Act that you are seeing? Um, I know we've talked about SBA loans and some other videos, but what are some of the big things that came out of that big stimulus package that businesses can take advantage of? Or where are they in the timeline of when businesses can take advantage of them? So, Major things that we're running across, of course, is everybody's looking at on the individual side, they're $1,200 per person plus $500 per kid, right? There's, they're understanding how that works. And there's, unfortunately, there's strategy to that. It's not just, I'm going to, oh, well, I did my tax return. They're going to send me a check. You have, if you had a new baby in 2019 and not, didn't have one in 2018, there's $500 difference on whether you file your 2019 return in a hurry or not. So we're having that conversation. Um, of course, all the stimulus and the note, the, um, sorry about the phone. I didn't mute the phone. Um, so it's related to the, the CARES Act itself and the loans, the SBA stuff. So there's a couple different categories of loans and that's where it gets really, really confusing is you can get the emergency loan, which is the economic injury disaster loan, the EIDL. That's where the $10,000 advance comes from. And that's, what, that's really exciting news, but knowing that if you have an EIDL loan out, you can't get the payroll protection loan. And so knowing how those, me those mechanics work together, where are you in your business and cash flow cycle? Do you need that 10,000 right now? Then get that EIDL loan. It's on the SBA's website. We have a cheat sheet for that if anybody needs it, but it's make that app, make that application there. But the good news is if you think that's not going to be enough for whatever reason, it's too limiting. 
you can bounce on over and have the payroll protection loan through a bank. It's basically just a 7A loan. It's a standard SBA loan, just has a lot of advantages. You can use that to refinance. So if you need the money in a hustle, go chase down that $10,000 grant, go get the EDIDL, and then you bounce over and get the other, you can get a refi if you need more. But it's having those things part of it. And then the, the final thing that we keep running across is the tax credits. If you're an employer, you potentially could get in credits for keeping your people employed, or you get credits because you allow them to go home and be sick. You know, it's, it's got a whole host of rules. The credits are extremely important, but they're not what needs your attention today, right? Because if you're running a business, you want to have cash flow. You want to make sure your people are good. You want to make sure that you have the money to operate. The credits are there. Know that they're there. There's paperwork. If you have really, really good accounting systems and payroll, it's probably no big deal keeping track of it. But when we're prioritizing for folks, you got you to pick what's the most important. And so the, the, the most important is keep the business open, which loan's going to apply. Uh, get yourself your personal cash if you need that for your household. Because I had one guy just uh, last week, we looked at his 2018 return and his 2019 return. If he had filed 2018 and just left it, he wouldn't have gotten any money. But then he actually filed his 2019 return because of kids and stuff. That changed it. He get 3300 bucks showing up. And so just... Knowing that there's quick cash, there's medium cash, and then there's stuff that goes from there. So that's the big things that we're pulling out of it. There's a million other things. Holy cow. Um, ask a financial advisor. They're going to give you a different set of lists. But those are the, those are the big three is that 1200 bucks, the loans, and then how to play, play around with the, uh, the other stuff. Great way of simplifying it all and kind of boiling it down to two or three, three things there. Um, we've had some prior discussions on, you know, how do people – the two biggest factors of cash probably in a business are people and real estate. And we've discussed both of those to a certain degree. People, do you lay people off now? Do you keep them on? There are incentives to turn a loan into a grant. If you keep your payroll steady, you mentioned you know, paid sick leave, all of those things. Those are all things to look at. We also had another discussion on working with your landlord through a real estate attorney. How do you negotiate lease so that maybe you can forbear two or three months to the back of your lease as opposed to today. Uh, different ways of looking at that. What are some other ways that you've already touched on some of them, increasing cash or minimizing expenses? What are some recommendations that you have out there to how to help folks with cash flow right now? It obviously depends a lot on your business. And this is where your professional advisors come in to give you insight. But what, one of the very first things that is happening, and there's a good way and there's a bad way of doing it, is negotiating with your vendors. Now, what you don't want to do, and this is happening all over the place, is call them up and say, oh, losing some revenue. I'm just not gonna pay you for a couple months. We'll square it away, you understand, thanks a lot. What they're asking is, I still want whatever you're providing, whatever product or service you're providing, I need it and I want it. I just am not gonna pay you for it. And I know that that seems kind of absurd to even ask that, it's at being asked. I have plenty of clients, I've received those calls. I need it want it, but I'm just not going to pay you for it. And, and the key is you're negotiating. You need to figure out how to work together as people. Because a lot of times that person you're calling up is having the exact same issue you are. Be empathetic to where they are. And, and believe it or not, big companies are doing some, some the same stuff. So if you need to call somebody up and say, hey, look, I really, really, really need your help with something, whatever that thing is. I just don't have the $500 a month or the $1,000 a month or whatever that is what are you going to have a conversation with? Do you want to do deferred payment? Do you want to do a lesser payment? Do you want to barter? And that's where a lot of part, uh, partnerships have come up in the small business community is the bartering. Now, by the way, I'm a CPA. When you barter, that is still compensation. You're still being paid. It is still taxable income. But you know what? You get what you need and your cash flow is managed. So that's one thing is working with your vendors, renegotiating better terms, renegotiating payments, swapping into a barter for a period of time. Maybe you have stuff that you can help each other with. There's a lot of options there on the vendor side. Uh, the other thing is the employees. And this is, this is really hard for a lot of folks because, I mean, those folks that you're employed are probably counting on that income to support themselves. Uh, there's a lot of very tough decisions to be made. I talked to one guy uh, with a larger company, and they all, everybody across the company agreed for the next 30 days they're going to take a 20% pay cut. But the 20% will be made up in the last six months of the year. So the employer is still going to pay the same amount. Everybody's going to get the same amount. But to keep the cash flow down, that's one choice. 
Um, other people are just simply cutting hours. I don't encourage you to run in there and just fire everybody um, because at some point you might need those people back. That's, that's some bad ideas. And that is where the loans are coming in. And I think that's the most powerful part about this. Unfortunately, once this dropped and everything started getting awful, I had a client contact us and their first questions were, what are the rules about terminating people in Texas? Well, we were maybe a day or two in and people were still, in fact, actually, it was a day or before the day or two before the chamber had even closed for the, so this was early. You guys were really proactive about this. And before you closed, I already had a client talking about firing people. And so that, that was a little bit too much of a knee jerk. So if you have folks and you want to keep them employed and you expect to be a business after this is all over with, that's where the loans come in is get that grant. It's a $10,000 grant, non taxable grant. You need the disaster loan. The disaster loan has a very, very quick expedited process. If the rumors, if they do what they say they're going to do, you could have that money in three weeks. So that money could come in and be used for payroll. Then there's the payroll protection loan, which takes a little bit longer. It's an SBA loan, but it's supposed to be expedited. That could be two and a half times your average monthly payroll. So when you're looking at cash flow, maybe it's not cutting back. Maybe it's just finding those cash flow resources in there. Um, and then some of the other stuff is, do you just take, hit the credit card a little harder for a short period of time? It depends on your business. So we've, we've looked at the cuts. We've looked at how we finance. We looked at where your, where your sources of funds are. Uh, there's a lot of choices. I cannot stress it enough. I know your CPA is probably losing their mind with tax return stuff, even though July 15th is a new deadline. Call them. That, Unfortunately, this is fortunately or unfortunately, this is what we do for a living. We know numbers. And if you have one that's a really good advisor that can sit there and work through things, you're going to pay for time. You're going to pay for the value of what you're getting. But think about what the ROI is going to be on that. And so that's what we're having a lot of hard conversations with people about. Should you lay people off? Should you fire that vendor? Should you close the door? Should you sell the building? I mean, I had a guy ask me about selling his building. It's, it's a, you won't sell the building in time for the, the cash flow to come through quick enough. But, that's, that's what's happening. So I, I have a quick question for you, Sean. One, one of the things that's popped up, and I don't know if you can speak to this directly just yet, because um, I know that we're still digging into some of this, but um, the payroll tax credits and things of that nature, would it be, I, I guess the question comes back to your comment of the business coming in day two, should I fire everybody? What, what would some advice be that you would give to businesses right now who are not knowing what to do and some of those payroll tax credit opportunities are out there um, I, I know you touched on it a little bit but what, what what is some just solid advice right now if somebody's scrambling not know and they just don't know what to do with some of their employees call your professional advisor I mean I that's that's that is the single best thing you can do and if you don't have a professional advisor it's it, you need to start looking or you need to call somebody that does understand business and business ops uh, but really it's looking at looking at what you really really need to sustain yourself it's what am I gonna? What am I doing with these people? I'm freaking out. I'm not sure I can make rent. I'm not sure I can pay the utility bills. You just prioritize. Um, you can't accomplish everything in a day that you could ever want to do, right? You you have to say this is the most important thing I'm going to do today, and there's a list of ten things. That tenth thing may not get done today because you're out of time. The same thing is true about resources is I got to prioritize who I got to pay, what do I got to take care of, what problems I got to solve. And you want to do them all. If you can, great. But if you can't, you inherently sometimes, sometimes the answer is no. Um, no, I'm just not going to do that advertisement in that newspaper this week because it's not a priority in this moment. Or is it? The business owner's job is to prioritize that stuff. And if you have no clue or you're stumped, that's what we do. That's what we the advisors like our, our business will go do. And it's and sometimes it's your lawyer, sometimes it's your CPA, but you, you should have a team around you of people to ask. I hope and that's one, question. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're trying to do with these conversations is to get people educated that there are options out there not to come in in the first week, lay everybody off, then that puts their employees in an awkward deal. They feel terrible because there are options out there. In fact, there are incentives out there to keep your employees on the payroll. And a lot of these loans that you're talking about actually turn into forgivable loans or grants if you keep your payroll at certain levels, if you use those funds for payroll debt, uh, mortgage payments, mortgage interest, et cetera, correct? That, that's it, and that's exactly it. And, and to reiterate that point, because if, if there's one thing that everybody takes away from this loan thing, 
the $10,000 grant is a non-taxable grant. They're giving you 10K. The second thing is, is if you use the loan for the appropriate reasons, which Tony did a wonderful job of summarizing that, it's basically payroll, yeah, it's because you're a genius. Uh, the, it's payroll, mortgage, rent, uh, debt, basically payroll. Payroll's the big monster that people are looking at, and rent is the number two big monster. They're also potentially, potentially forgivable. Now, the only reason I keep saying potentially is because it's the government and it's all about the process. But if they are forgivable, all of those proceeds you received are non-taxable. It does not show up as income. It is not a typical cancellation of debt type of a thing. Um, if you don't, if they can't cancel it or they don't cancel the whole thing or whatever it is, it's a loan. It's a loan that can go out as much as 10 years. And I think the cap is like 4% interest rate. So, and it has no fees, no prepayment penalties. It's, it, they turn it into a really, really nice advantageous loan. So the worst case scenario is you have a debt and I'm so sorry about that, but people are employed, you're still in business and your business is ready to rock and roll when the doors open again. Uh, it's knowing that the non-taxable component in there is exceptional. That is really, really powerful. But the second piece I want you to walk away with on the loans, there is a finite amount of money. That well will run dry. Everybody in the United States is trying to get to that pool of money. And if you only need 10,000, great, it's gonna last a long time. The, the loans are basically for companies with less than 500 employees. 500 employees, two and a half months of payroll. That's the loan. The well will run dry. So if you're doing this, do it, do it quickly get moving. Don't think about it for a month. And okay, I'm clear of the thing, but I, gosh, I survived the month that Tony said we're going to be fine after that. And then, well, then what? Maybe you're out of cash. Plan now, plan now, plan now. Uh, you bring up a great point, Sean. And I think you alluded to it earlier when you were talking about your three remaining walls, the last one being strategic, because I've never been called a Pollyanna. I'm much more of a realist. But the real fact is, through this crisis, you're gonna have some opportunities that you can actually put into your business that can pay off long-term. Proper utilization of cash right now, keeping your employees on, keeping them happy, and as you said, taking care of them, part of your business family. But if you're in the need to uh, refinance right now, building or anything like that, you've got interest rates dirt cheap right now. You unfortunately are gonna have some people who are gonna be out of work but there's an opportunity now to boost up your payroll or make some key acquisitions there from people that are gonna be out and shifting what they're doing. So there are some opportunities here for individual businesses to think about strategically, correct? Absolutely, in fact, actually, while I don't ever wait or want a recession, things go on sale in a recession. And, and this is starting, this is the recession, guys. What I mean, technically recession is for the two quarters, blah, 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 but it's really, there's this pullback. What's happening if you're a savvy business owner and you have the cash? Because again, the loan is intended to replace expenses, but it could also be the exact same loan that bolsters you because some opportunity is there. Uh, the business next door is, is a competing business, and boy, you could sure use their resources, and, and they're just not going to make it for whatever reason, or this is too stressful for them. Can you buy their business? Does that create a whole new universe of opportunities? And real estate's one of those refinancing, but also acquisition. As, as things go on further, businesses, buildings, cars, I mean, if you, if you need that old 1969 Corvette, just wait. Some, somewhere along the line, somebody's going to have one for sale. But watch, watch everything. What are your opportunities that are seizing from this? And the money could be part of that as well. Um, and something that strategically that we've had a lot of conversations with, whenever we talk about the financial statements for a business, I have this little silly theory that when you look at your P&L, your profit and loss statement, nothing on that thing is an expense. Nothing on your profit and loss should be an expense. Everything you spend money on should be an investment. It should get you something greater than what you're spending. I pay for my rent so I have the facility so I can work in a great environment. I pay for the employee because I get additional skills and I build my business. Everything you spend money on, now we all waste money on silly things. I mean. The fact that I have a pen with my company name on it doesn't mean that there's really a lot of business I get from pens. I just think it's cool and I want a pen. So there, you can spend your money on whatever you want to spend on, but it should give you a return. 
either financial or emotional or, or whatnot. I point this out because the hard conversation we're having is my, my firm, for example, we make a living by giving advice. Our, what we do is give advice and that knowledge is our asset that we have to sell. I don't have t-shirts to sell, but I have knowledge. I've had people say, oh, well, I can't pay you now. I can't pay you to do this, but I know that what you're gonna do is gonna save me $50,000. I'm not charging $50,000. The same thing with your lawyer. If your lawyer says, I really need to draft this document up to protect you, oh, I can't really do that now, but, or whatever the conversation is. Stop looking at expense in a panic mode. Look at expense as an investment in something greater. And it could be CPA, it could be financial advisor, it could be a building, it could be a car. Everything you're spending money on needs to have a return on investment. And so start there, because we're not, because whenever people talk about cash flow, they think, I gotta cut back, I gotta cut back. That is not true. It's opportunities, it's investment, it's just a closer look, am I really spending my money wisely? Because when you come out of this, you may look up and realize, man, I've been paying for that thing for the last two years and it's stupid. Great, you learned something, actually a better business for that. That's great. Chris, we're gonna unfortunately have to be wrapping up this conversation here shortly. You have any closing thoughts given what Sean's described and what you're seeing out there? Um, I well, based on what Sean's kind of outlined, there's a lot that's out there and there's a lot that's going to be coming out every day. Um, but find, I think a few takeaways for me, find somebody that you trust to get advice from, trust mm -hmm. their advice, go out and act quickly. Um, number two, just go out and act quickly. There's, as Sean said, there is a finite amount of dollars out there and you don't want to um, show up to the well as it's drying up. You want to get out there and be in that line as quickly as possible if those resources are something that you need that's vital to your business. So I think that's a big one as well. Um, and then number three, um, kind of be agile. I mean, there, there's so much going on. Be quick. Um, there, there's... I, I'm just trying to process some of the stuff that Sean's gone through because he's got so much good information that he's just shared with us. And so um, I, I think just be quick um, and work, work from that. And on my side of things, we're working through the, the same CARES Act that Sean is, and we're looking at it from a little bit of a different perspective. But I think a lot of the information is shared between the two of us. And so um, I'm, I'm hoping any resources that Sean might be able to share with us, we will be able to share on our blog and on our resource page on um, the Frisco Chamber website. So all of that information will be there. Um, this recording will be up there as well. So you can um, watch this um, any day you wish. But other than that, I, I think that's all I got. So I'll send it back over to you, Tony. All right. And Sean, you got any closing thoughts here very quickly? I, actually, I love what Chris just said, being agile. Uh, this is moving quickly. We are all, I mean, whether it's the chamber or lawyers or financial advisors or us or whomever, we're all working like crazy to keep up. And then it changes. And then it changes. And by the way, anything that deals with law, especially tax law, it'll change in three more months because they reinterpret what they originally wrote. Be agile. I love that because things are moving quickly and everybody's having to adjust. So the advice you got five days ago may not apply anymore just because they passed some new law. So uh, I love that. That's a great one, Chris. I'm going to steal it now. Well, that's good. I like it. We steal from each other. That's what we like to do, share information, act quickly, but we want to act knowledgeably. And I think the one takeaway that I had, my takeaway is I heard this story and I had heard this before, but it reminded me when you have a storm coming, cows will tend to run away from the storm. And they, as a result of that, they're running away. The storm eventually is going to pass them up, but they spend a lot of time in that storm. Buffalo, on the other case, they run into the storm and they tackle it head on. And as a result, by running into the storm, they actually spend less time in the storm than the cows do. So my advice is with proper knowledge, with proper education and being prepared, tackle the things that are in front of you, run into that storm, don't be afraid of it and run into it and deal with it. And then you're gonna be in better position when we come out of this and as we go into recovery. So, Chris, we want to thank you for keeping everybody up to speed on what's going on out there. Sean, thanks so much for all your advice and keep busy. We like it when people are busy because we know that way you're giving people information, they're in a better spot. And from everybody here at the chamber, our entire team behind the scenes, we're going to be working on putting more and more information up there on the resource page. Check out the other conversations with the chamber. Let us know what you want to hear about. And we're just going to be working with you here. 
for as long as it's necessary until we can get out of this thing and get back to doing business here in Frisco and beyond. So thanks everybody. We'll be back with everybody soon.